Hello everybody, it's Daniel Bentink here and I'm here bringing you another tutorial. Today we are going to be talking about how to get the most out of your height maps. Now height maps are very important, they're actually really awesome. When we're talking about materials, an important part of the material is always the height information. Whether you're doing it with a height map which is black and white or a normal map which uses RGB values, they're both used to create the surface bumps or microsurface details on your material so that you don't have to do it with the model and have a really high poly model that's gonna bog your system down. It's a very cheap way to create little surface details as you can see like on this planet here where we've got all these tiny little bumps. So if I go into solid view, you'll see that my planet is just a sphere. So it's really great to have a height map. And today I'm going to be talking about how to utilize your height maps so that they both look good and they don't take up too much space on your hard drive. Now, when I was actually working on this scene, uh, you might recognize this scene from tutorials I'd made in previous videos, but when I was actually trying to make one of my materials, the actual material for the clouds, I realized something bizarre. Uh, when I actually finally baked out my height map for my clouds and I plugged it into my height socket, uh, this is the result that I got. So if we zoom in and we look at our clouds, all our white clouds, you'll see this weird thing happening where we've got all these weird lines. Now if I turn my bump off, that goes away because all that bump information has just been removed now. But if I turn my bump strength back on, you can see that the bump map really isn't looking very desirable. And the reason for that is because there's actually very little information in this map. Uh, and I'll show you in uh, GIMP what the actual map looked like. So here is what the original map that I baked out looked like. And the problem with this is it's very dark. Now I originally rendered everything out as a HDR format. And that's a good tip because rendering out as a HDR high dynamic range image is always great so that you can shrink things down later because a HDR format is 32 bit and it's basically the highest bit depth of an image and it's great for getting all your values and getting a really high detail image so you usually want to be exporting most textures or renders out in that format first before you make changes and you save out like a smaller version in say a PNG or JPEG format which only go up to 8 to 16 bit and a HDR is fine if you want it to be your final uh, image format. The problem is the size is very large. So if we take a look at my files here, I'll show you the HDR version, which is this top one here. And you can see uh, it's a very large image. It's 7K. Uh, I think it's actually 7K high and 14K wide. So it's a very large image. And you can see that's resulted in a 151,000 kilobyte or 151 megabyte texture. And that's very large. Of course, if you had many textures like this, you would end up using a lot of space. But you can see other versions of the texture that I made in PNG formats end up being a lot smaller. And that's basically what I'm trying to show. So um, I was basically, I'm basically trying to show how you can save in a uh, small format without losing detail. Because if we come back to my Blender scene, the reason we got this artifact or this very low detail crappy height look uh, with all these uh, very few levels of detail is actually because I saved my HDR image uh, here as a PNG and that's uh, this version here. So if we open this up, I'll look at it in my image editor so you can see it there. Actually, I'll open it up in GIMP as well. So we'll just bring that in as a new layer. So, oops. I'll just delete this. I've got two of the same images, two layers. Uh, we just delete that. There we go. So I've got our HDR and then we've got a PNG, which I'll drag in. And there it is. And if we look at it, you can see it's pretty much identical at first glance. There's not really a huge difference between the HDR and the PNG version that I saved out. But if we look at the actual histogram here, uh, it's probably a little hard to tell because the image is already very dark but basically what the bit depth entails is how much detail is in the image like i said before and if we look at our histogram uh you're going to get all these lines like if i were to bring in a uh, another image 
Let's just bring in a random photo. There we go. There's some cupcakes I made at one point. And you can see the histogram of this image. And basically what all these lines are is it's showing all the different values in your image. So from left to right, it basically goes from black, as you can see here, all the way up to white. And it's showing the amount of pixels that there are on each value. So you can see that most of our pixels are around uh, this range of the gray area. And then we've got less and less pixels showing up on the higher values and only a very few values showing up on the white value. And then same thing with the black. There's not many pure blacks in our image. Um, that's why it tapers off here. And so that's basically what that histogram means. It's showing you where all the values of your pixels are. And the problem with our, our other height map is that our image is all the way at the left side. Uh, and it's not utilizing the full zero to one range. And there's barely any contrast. Contrast is the word you'd use. There's just barely any difference in the value of the pixels. They're all very similar. Uh, and that became a huge problem when I uh, saved out my PNG texture because PNG is only, I think I saved it as an eight bit image and eight bit is uh, very low compared to HDR, which is 32 bit. So I'll actually show you what my HDR version looked like. And there it is. And you can see right off the bat, there's way more detail. Like there's all these tiny little bumps. Uh, you see, yeah, if we zoom out, you can see the bigger bumps of the clouds that I've created. And all the details showing up, it doesn't have this really bad jagged look where there's barely any levels to the image. And the reason for that uh, is because even though our image is really dark on our original HDR, the HDR has a lot more levels to it because it's 32 bits. So even though it's only utilizing this tiny slither of the histogram, it's still got a lot more information than say the 8-bit PNG that we saved out, which looks the same at first glance. Because even though they look similar, there's actually far less information uh, that you don't realize is missing in the PNG version because it's only 8-bit. So to fix that, basically what I did and this is where we get to uh, actually how to utilize your height maps. What I did is I got my HDR, my very dark HDR, and I went to colors in GIMP and you got all these settings here, all these filters that you can apply, uh, but you want to go to auto and you got a bunch of settings here. The only settings that are important for us are white balance, stretch contrast and stretch contrast HSV. Now, I'll start with stretch contrast. And basically what this does is you can see it working now, uh, both in the image and in the histogram. You can see it's stretched out the image all the way so that it uses the zero to one range of our image values. So now instead of just being stuck in the very dark area, it's now utilizing the whole histogram so that there are values of total black and values of white as well which is also why you see the gaps in the lines here. So it's not as dense as it could be because we've just stretched a small portion of it out, but because it's HDR, there's still an abundance of information that will be able to translate across to a PNG format. So yeah, suddenly there's just a lot more contrast. And there are a couple settings here. So when you click the stretch contrast button, you'll get this little uh, window. And keep colors just allows it to stay the same color by changing each channel the same amount because basically what stretch contrast does is it stretches each red green and blue channel individually if you don't have that checked so you can end up with your image changing color but that's not an issue with this map anyway because it's black and white non-linear is a bit different checking that on basically makes it work on gamma corrected values instead of working on srgb so it's just a different color space and will create a different appearance. You be the judge of uh, what you prefer. See, it's moved over a little bit. It's a bit darker now. Um, actually, you know what? I think gamma correcting it is actually creating more contrast. I like it. Yeah, I like that. So yeah, it's up to you. I think I'll leave it on. I think it looks good. But yeah, the other two settings I want to go over are the uh, stretch contrast HSV. And that's just the same as stretch contrast only it works in hsv space instead of rgb so instead of changing the individual red green and blue channels 
Instead, it manipulates the image by changing the hue, saturation, and value. And that is a way of maintaining the color of the image. So yeah, just a different way of doing it. You can, of course, try it and see how it looks. In fact, I'll undo this, uh, that stretch contrast we did, and I'll try out the HSV version. So color, auto, stretch contrast, HSV. And you won't get a pop-up with this one. It's just only got one setting. And we're back. That actually took quite a bit longer than the other one. As you can see, it's created a similar result. So you be the judge of which one you like more. Uh, I'm going to stick with the other one. So we'll just undo that. And now there's just one more setting I want to show you guys. So, and that's the white balance. So basically what it's going to do is it's going to stretch out a little sliver of uh, contrast and stretch it across the whole histogram like the other setting did. Only, as you can see, it's created even more contrast than the previous settings. And the reason for that is it goes further than stretching out to the zero to one range. And it actually disregards pixel values, the, the 0 0.05 uh, amount of pixels that are on the left and right of the histogram. So basically it takes the darker values and just throws them away and takes the brightest values and throws them away and then stretches it out even more. So you do lose a bit of information using this one, but you get more contrast because it basically just cuts off uh, the sides of the histogram. But I'm perfectly fine with going with the normal stretch contrast and with the nonlinear components checked. And we can save that out. So I'll go to File, Export As, and I can choose where to save this and I'll just save it, but with a PNG extension instead. And I go export and then I just press export. Compression level nine is fine. All the settings are fine, but I'll actually cancel that because I've already got a texture. So after we'd exported that uh, PNG, we'd be able to pop that into Blender. And I'll show you what that looks like now. So I've opened up the texture here in this texture node, our stretched version saved as a PNG. And we'll plug that in now. And you can see we've still got an issue showing up. It's very harsh. And the reason for that is because we stretched the contrast, it's now a lot more, got a lot more height to it than the original. So if we look at the original, it's very dark. And so we needed our height to our height slider to be very high to see it at all. But now with our uh, height slider so high, uh, using the now stretched one, which has so much contrast in it, is making it way more visible. So to fix that, we just simply need to crank the strength down to a level that we like. So you probably need to go very low, something like that. Okay, and now I've just got some bumps maybe a bit higher there we go and you can see those bumps have been maintained and you can see the detail on this image is still pretty good you can see some detail and that's because when we stretched our image while it was still a HDR we still got the high 32 bit um, values or the the still the high detail that we were able to stretch out and then it was then compressed to 8 bit as a PNG but it still had plenty of information because we'd stretched all those values from the HDR out. Uh, you wouldn't want to save it as a PNG and then stretch it out because you've already lost the information by uh, compressing it to an 8-bit. So you want to make sure you make your changes in the HDR before you save out your final image as a PNG. But yeah, now we've got all this detail that we've been able to maintain as the PNG format as opposed to our original PNG, which we hadn't stretched out, and it just had this disgusting, very low detail, jagged lines everywhere, which didn't look good. Uh, yeah, and it looks fairly similar to the HDR, and the great part is we've saved a lot of space. So if I look at my textures, there we go, and you can see my HDR is huge, it's 151 megabytes, and our final PNG version is 29 megabytes. So it's a lot smaller and it looks fairly similar in terms of how much detail we can see. Now you'll notice it's actually still bigger than our original PNG that we saved out without stretching. And that's because a big factor in how big they are is actually the amount of different values of pixel you have in your image. So because we've got a high contrast range because we stretched it out across the histogram, 
it's got all these different values and it's making the file size bigger. Whereas if you were to say have a completely black or completely white image, it would end up being a lot smaller because there's a lot less values. And that's the case with this one. It's got a very low range of values. So it ends up being much smaller. But even though it's still bigger, uh, it still ends up being smaller than our HDR. So that's nice. But yeah, that's how we were able to maintain detail. It's just a cool trick to stretch out the contrast of your black and white maps, particularly for height, because it will work very easily. Uh, it just means you need to tone your strength down. Most rendering engines have a slider that you can just easily change your strength level. It won't work for other maps like roughness so much because you end up getting a different roughness value entirely and it just doesn't really work unless you were to like put in some like extra math nodes in front to get it to the amount that you want after making the changes to the image. But um, yeah, for height it definitely works and you can just use the strength slider to tone it down. So yeah, that was how to optimize your height maps and re retain detail even when saving to a low bit depth image format. All right guys, I hope you found this video helpful. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.